actually before I rinse off the truck, I switched to uh, deionized water. I just want to, I want to blow this out here. Just to, so I'm gonna blow it out and I'm gonna put the cover back on. I had all my S2000 parts and everything in here. This factory bed liner is way nicer than my, I think my Line X liner is, well, I think it's what I have. But there's some shavings and stuff from them putting the bed cover on. I just wanted to blow out this. I don't think I need, I don't really need to clean it or anything because it's still super new. So, just throw some deionized water in there so I don't have to worry about water spots. And now I can close this up. I really like this bed liner. This is the, not the Ford, and it's not the OEM one that comes as an option with the truck. This is a Ford authorized accessory. Uh, that covers the bed. The f factory one is kind of sticks up and looks goofy. So there's the what the bed liner looks like. It's pretty nice. All right, let's go back to tap water just because I don't really need to waste it. I'm gonna rinse the whole truck off. So again, I sprayed some Hydro Two on here, so the beading will be probably will be pretty good, but the surface is slimy with all kinds of contaminants. with the Hydro 2. Just put it right over top of the contaminants that are in the paint already. Or on or in the, on the clear coat or in the clear coat. If I could do it all over again, I'd do the longer boom pole. I'd do like a nine foot. All right, before I get too far into this, let's take our trailer hitch off. <clears throat> you know, I might want to just leave it on here and get it, get some metal polish out and clean this sucker up. The reason I'm taking this off is to save my shins from walking into this thing. I'm having new plate frames made because I'm about out of these that'll have an option for both upper and lower holes. So you have an option for four hole or two hole. And we'll have an option for stain like brush, brush stainless or this black version. So an option for either or. All right, so step one of decon. Now the wheels are ready, the engine bay is cleaned, uh, but I'm gonna prepare this. I put 150 mLs, which is what? Just, just above five ounces. So there's lots of soap. Do you need that much? I don't know, but that just seems to be what works well. And this is one of those things where you, you probably want to adjust. You know, depending on your vehicle, depending on how big your car is, depending on your pressure washer, 
but my 2.8 gallon per minute monster electric pressure washer for whatever reason filling it up to the 150 ml mark just seems to work uh, and then we'll also put <clears throat> some on the sponge to put in our wash bucket so as usual nothing's different here I'm going to fill up my bottle completely with soap because this truck is so large but if you had a smaller car you might be able to use a little less soap a little less water put our top on and then we want to mix it around again even though this soap is citrus based oops, it is technically alkaline at least I think it is I might be making that up but and it's not super soluble in water so you really want to shake it up again one thing you could consider doing is fill the bottle up with water and then measure it but it's harder to figure out how much soap you put in so it might make sense to yeah to fill it up with 250 mls and then add add the soap in fact you know the pf22 is labeled all the way so and oh, i guess the same thing with the with the original mtm it's also labeled as well all right so let's put it on our pressure washer and foam it up so Charles, Charles tells me you want to do some flooring. Yeah, it's funny. My uh, kid, my kid had shown me that product a while back, and I sent it to my parts guy a couple times. I said, "Can you please go measure my garage and get this done?" And then, of course, Charles told me what you guys are doing, and that's perfect. Right. Uh, and then, so, are you doing this as a business now, or what? What, what do you got going on? No, I'm retailing it. Um, I'm not installing it. I just installed it because it's Charles, and he goaded me yeah. into it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, what, what happened is, is I'd, be, I'd become sort of the spokesperson for this flooring by accident, and uh -huh. so they were selling, you know, a couple million dollars worth of flooring, and then sending me like a hundred bucks as a referral. And so I now have an online retail business. I'm like, well, I need to just start selling this because you know I can make. Now make 30 30 percent margins on it rather than just making a hundred bucks sure. you know on sending them millions of dollars of business yeah and, yeah and so charles you know charles talked me into going and install it but i'm i'm not out like like you know blue collar in it here i'm just kind of sure. i'm selling it it's super easy to install you just need to find somebody to do it i mean any handyman that has a table saw can do it okay you know? So, I mean, you're talking about it took he and I, what, seven hours to do his garage, and we don't know what the heck we're doing. You know, so if you have a real man, you know, that knows what they're doing, uh, you know, mechanically. Yeah, we can get it installed easily. I just didn't know what, what exactly what you had going on, and Charles explained it a little differently. But, um, yeah, so I get better pricing than what you would get direct. Um, sure. Because I've sold so much flooring. They've given me, you know, they've given me better pricing than anybody else, any other dealer or any other person has. And so I know all the owners. I know them all personally because, again, like I'm on the front page of their website because, I don't know, because I was liked it. And I'm talking about it and I have videos yeah. about it. And I guess I'm the only one that ever did that. And okay. so and so now, you know, whatever flooring you want, you order it through me. Uh, and then uh, I think doing the shop might make sense to have me come down and shoot video and do it and do like a little collaboration and talk about the floor. Yeah. It would certainly help me. It would probably help you guys, and I'll get you, you know, really good pricing on it. But well, I've got, I've got a, a particular space and a, a couple spaces where it would make sense, but one in particular, because we, we created like this separate little 10,000 square foot area for our cars. We're doing like a VIP car storage. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's connected but separate, and it's right off. We're building this really high end, super modern uh, lounge, you know, mm -hmm. like a bar and really cool space. Mm -hmm. So, right off of that, we got this glass, like this glass roll up door. My office there is all floor to ceiling glass in that space, and we're putting all the nicest of the cars that are in the storage area in this first bay area, which is 50 by 50. Mm hmm. Uh, so that space right there, it's a perfect square, more or less, 
and it would make sense to probably do that space because it's going to be very aesthetic there. Uh, we're putting all our nicest stuff there, mm-hmm. and we can we can tie the colors into our interior space and probably make a good fit. Mm-hmm. You know how, how you would obviously benefit out of that is, of course, every one of our customers that comes in there and says, "I want that in my garage." Bingo! Right? Exactly. Exactly, because that's what every single one of our guys that sees that I want that. Right. Right. The the only question I'd have is is this area higher end than this flooring you know like like i'm doing i'm doing a uh, like a like a, a multi-million dollar garage just a, it's a guy who watches my videos and he's we're doing a um, a commercial grade high high end uh, porcelain tile because he didn't think swiss tracks was you know was high end enough but it, it uh, does this, this for the garage space is perfect you know gotcha. what I mean? because it, it, it fits that environment and the lounge area no you know what i mean because yeah. that, that's where you know that's the condition space where everyone's hanging out but then right i mean through the glass wall you look into the storage space where the cars are right right so, right you know we wouldn't do the whole space you know that just that front 50 by 50 area it would be perfect that's the most visible from that area and that's where we're going to put all the nicest stuff mm-hmm. yeah. yeah so the the images that would come as far as the cars are there in that area i mean that's the perfect environment you probably you couldn't almost create a better environment there you know mm-hmm. uh for that type of stuff locally for sure yeah yeah I'd, I'd like to do my garage at the house as well. Yeah. So you just tell me the best way to do that. You just need me to get you the measurements, or yeah. So or, do you do you have an idea what design you want, or do you need help with that? I probably need a little help just because I don't know what the options are. So I, okay. I would hate to just like see an image of like, oh yeah, that's great, but I could have done something better just by you know because I don't know what's available from the company. So what, if you can get me dimensions of the garage then I can design it on the floor designer. We can kind of email back and forth. I can share you with, share with you, okay, here's, here's, you know, here's a couple of options. And then from there you can say, well, how about we do this, this color instead of that color? And we kind of, you know, we yeah. change, change I know what the I pattern. Want I want it all black, with just like a little bit of a gray border, uh, maybe like five foot off the exterior. Uh, okay. Dimension, you know, that just kind of borders it a little bit, something right. like that. Uh, okay. The, the, I already like my floors are already black, and okay. the garage is it's simple. It's, a, it's not very big. It's a three car garage. Yep. And uh, there's nothing to it, and there's really nothing in my garage. So you so, know, putting it in there won't be no big deal. Gotcha. So we would do a we would do okay we would do a rectangular perimeter, kind of like what we did in Charles's two car. Um, I think that looks way better than trying to outline each parking space. Yeah. Um, when you just do it, just because if you do all black, now keep in mind, black is like a black car, you know, yeah. so when you, it gets dirtier. Um, so you have to, you know, you'll have to clean it more than you would if you did gray or silver or something like that. What's the best way to clean this stuff? Um, you just, you, 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 well, the dirt, you just vacuum it if you ever need to. So maybe once a year you'd vacuum it, um, but the, the, you would just wipe it or mop it with a mop. You know? Okay. Even then, like, like my floor, like my floor. I'm standing here looking at it right now. Mine's black. You know, so I have, I have a, the main area is black, and then I have a couple of gray accents in my wash bay. And you know, yeah. it's just you get a piece of leaf or something on black, and you see it. You do it on gray. You yeah. don't. No different than a black car. You know. Yeah, I, I, I like it in black, so I'll do. Yeah. I'll do it in the black. And so let me get my. Let me get. Let me measure it. Right. So yep. I'll, I'll, I'll measure it, and we'll design it, and we'll get that done, and that. That's one one part, and then uh, I can get you the dimensions for that space. I mean, roughly it's fifty by fifty. I mean, it's going to change a little bit, but it's roughly fifty by fifty. Sure, is what that space is there, and that's part of the our VIP uh, little lounge uh, car storage area. So you know, perfect environment, uh, and, and the building, everything is brand new. I don't know if Charles gave you any information about what we're moving to, but we're moving into a brand new location, mm-hmm. all built to suit. 50,000 square feet and I'm putting everything in this in the spot brand new so all new paint booths all new you know we're reconditioning all our lifts and all new offices you know the entire space is built to suit and brand new and super modern super clean you know just real real tight so we're long overdue and super excited yeah building the building's just about done at CEOs in a couple weeks and we're working on our engineering and permitting process right now so we'll start construction on the interior in january 
uh, and we look to move in in uh, April. Okay. Yeah, so that flooring would go in like probably in March. April. Yeah, yeah at the end. March or April. Yeah, yep. yeah. And we're, you're probably going to want like a legit like real man to do it. You know, you're not going to want me and Charles out there hacking up the cuts. You know? No, no. We'll, yeah, we'll figure out. I'm sure they have a recommended installer or you know somebody. Yes. Or my yeah. guys can do it. I mean, they, they, trust me, they can. They can my guys can do it in five seconds. Right, right. Yeah, they could definitely do it. Having me and Charles do it is not a good idea. No, no, no. Your time's more valuable, and Charles is halfway retarded. <laughs> right, exactly. He said right here, so I got to give him a hard time. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, okay. no problem. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, so give me your dimensions, and then I'll, I'll get cracking on that. I'll talk to Swiss Tracks. And, all right, man, I'll get, it. I'll, 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 get, uh, I'll get cracking on it. All right, I appreciate it. All right, talk to you soon. So Later. Much. Bye. Bye. All right, so let's do our normal foaming process. It's funny, I was just just got off the phone with the owner of uh, Ultimate Auto. That they do, you know, they do all of the all the Orlando. Actually, nationally, they do a lot of the NBA players, NFL players, all kinds of stuff. There, you know, they're kind of like a. Uh, they're, you know, in the, that, that top tier of doing all of the high-end cars in the U.S. But, shoot, after uh, doing Charles' garage, Charles works there, so after doing his garage, now everybody wants it. <laughs> so, but now i got to figure out how to, how to manage all of this. stuff foams really well. So again, the point of this is to prep the surface. Get any oils and tar, anything that's on the surface, we want to get it off. All right, so this is one of those times where I want to let this sit a little longer. Um, now it's hitting the back of the truck where I have the sunlight hitting it, uh, but in general, I don't want to rinse this off. I want to leave it on the paint because I want it to react, break down whatever's on it. So I'm going to take and prep while that's doing its thing on the paint. I'm taking and prep my wash bucket. I generally like to rinse this out if I can. Telling you this soap just does really well. It's just a it's just a great product. It does great in that it adds, you know, it's 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 you know it's if anything, I'd almost like to use this soap all the time. Um, if it didn't, you know, strip everything off. But again, I, I don't know how much this is gonna strip and, and you know how it's I don't think it's gonna strip everything off. That you want off, but in the in the process, it certainly can't hurt. Hurt. I need to use soap anyway, and I think this does a good job of prepping the surface. Smells decent. Doesn't smell as good as Adams, but smells decent. Foams really well. Suds up really well. But there's a uh, there's a definite basic feel to it. You know, if you've taken chemistry class and science lab, um, it feels you know that that kind of slippery feel. 
it feels like a base or an alkaline solvent to help break down junk. So process is the same as any other normal wash where I'm going to take my mitt and I'm gonna go top down. I don't need to use as much care as I normally do with a corrected surface because I'm going to correct this, right? So the whole point of this is to get the surface completely decontaminated so that I can come back and polish it. So I might, I might run the pad a little bit longer than I normally would or do a little larger surface area. Less, less fear of marring because I'm gonna be working on dialing in the paint anyway. Gosh, this truck is so big. That's why what I'm gonna do, since I don't have an army working on this thing, that's why I'm going to decontaminate this today, take the rest of the day off, come back, tomorrow and work on it some more. Maybe even tonight after the gym, I might come out and tape it off. But I'm gonna tackle this thing one step at a time. Shoot, I can even hear the, the sponge as I'm dragging it across the paint. I can feel the contaminants. Yeah, right from the factory, brand new truck. No story, just that this is what happens. Pool guy, pool guy sees me out here on a Monday afternoon off and he's probably wondering what the heck I'm doing. Is this guy driving around on a Raptor and Porsches and have this house if he's washing cars all day. So that's the general procedure. I'm gonna go around, wash the whole truck like normal, but that's the procedure, and that's the Chemical Guy Citrus Wash product. You can see it's still running. I'm leaving it on the surface so that it can break down whatever's on it. In this case, it was whatever was on it from the factory, plus the, uh, the silicon dioxide based, uh, the, um, the CarPro Hydro 2. Uh, so this would be the process we'd use to uh, strip wash the car in preparation for Iron X, which will be the next step. So what happens when the when the force pulls you back? Your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor. Foot to the floor. Foot to the floor.